Question. Do you care if the fruit and veggies you eat are organic or GMO? Do you think it matters? Let's talk about it in comment section. Catherine here. If there is one thing that couldn't be more important when it comes to protecting the kidneys is the way we eat. If you have kidney issues, making sure that the food you eat every day nourishes your body instead of damaging it can make all the difference in the world. People have been observed stopping the progression of the disease when they change the way they eat. And the most important goal of any way of eating aimed at protecting the kidneys is decreasing the amount of scores produced while enhancing nutritional value. So it's only natural to think about organic foods when we want the best possible nutrition. This is why today many people have passionate views on GMO and organic grown foods. The debate about some of the health concerns has never been so prominent on social media as it is today. And as I was saying, people with kidney issues tend to be even more concerned about the way their food has been grown. But when talking about GMO versus organic foods, I rarely see kidney health mentioned. Which surprises me because we all know that people with kidney issues are more susceptible to scores produced by foods. So today we are going to see which fruit and veggies are more likely to be dangerous the so-called dirty dozen. And we are also going to see which of these foods are more often GMO. And most important, we are going to answer the question, should you be concerned with GMO foods? The first thing we want to understand is how the way a crop is grown influences the linked health dangers. According to the US Department of Agriculture, there are three ways a crop can be grown. First of all, organic. Organic agricultural crops are grown from organic seeds without synthetic fertilizers, chemicals, pesticides, irradiation, or genetic engineering. While natural pesticides and fertilizers are primarily used, a limited number of approved synthetic substances are allowed if natural methods are inadequate. Then there is the conventional method. This is how most of the fruit and veggies are produced. Conventional farms tend to be larger using technological innovations and growing a single type of high yield crop utilizing synthetic pesticides and fertilizers. More food is produced with less land to ensure a more abundant and less expensive food supply. Some of these conventionally grown foods make use of Biotechnology or GMO. Agricultural biotechnology employs tools such as traditional breeding and genetic engineering to enhance plants and animals for specific agricultural purposes. It can be used for insect control and weed management and also to protect crops against disease. In short, you are going to find way more chemicals and pesticides in conventionally grown and especially GMO foods. Also, there are still concerns about the safety of certain GMO foods, especially for those with kidney issues. More about this in a moment. Before that, question, why there is the need for GMO foods? Now guys, what we must understand here is that there is one main reason why agricultural industries are making more and more GMO foods today. They want to produce a better looking, better tasting product at a lower price. It's clear that your health is not their main concern here. But GMO foods are not necessarily bad either. I'm not here to try to scare you like many journalists are doing these days. There is no clear evidence that GMOs pose a specific risk to those with CKD. GMOs are primarily designed to increase crop yield and resistance to pests. They are subject to safety testing before they are allowed on the market. But we must understand that one of the reasons why GMO foods exist is to be more resistant to pesticides, which is not necessarily a good thing. What pesticides can be harmful for the kidneys? While the overall risk from pesticides is typically low for the general population, people with kidney disease may be more susceptible to their harmful effects. And there are pesticides you could potentially come in contact with from your food. 
Organophosphates, for example, are used on a wide variety of crops and could potentially be dangerous. There are regulations in place to make sure the levels for these pesticides are low enough for the general population, but we don't know if this also means they are safe for those with CKD. And some organophosphates have been directly linked to kidney damage. Melathion is one example. Please notice that this study was conducted in the US and on healthy adults. What they found out is that those exposed to this common pesticide were 25% more likely to develop CKD. And many other peer-reviewed scientific studies have shown disturbing links between pesticides and human health issues. So question, does this mean you should avoid GMO foods and stick with organic? There is not a single answer to this question, and I won't give you a blanket statement. But it's obviously important, in my opinion, that people with kidney issues know more about the origin of their food. I also won't tell you to just avoid anything non-organic because it could be full of dangerous pesticides. In fact, while opting for organic produce could help to reduce exposure to pesticide residues, organic doesn't always equate to pesticide-free. Organic farmers may use natural pesticides, which can also have health implications if not properly managed. This is why it's crucial to get informed about this issue. You see, today eating a diet based on fruit and vegetables is considered the very first step towards a better kidney health, and we want to make sure that these foods are actually good for you. It's crucial for you to maintain a healthy balanced diet and minimize exposure to potential toxins, including pesticides. And there is definitely some advice I can give you to greatly reduce your exposure to pesticides from foods. We will see what foods are part of the Dirty Dozen, a list published annually by the Environmental Working Group, EWG. They tested and identified the foods that have the highest concentrations of pesticide residues. Very important! And also, we will explore the most effective methods for eliminating pesticide residues from your produce. Let's see that first. What can you do to remove pesticides from fruit and veggies? The most important thing when it comes to reducing pesticides exposure is washing produce properly. Washing fruits and vegetables can help to remove pesticide residues, as well as dirt and bacteria. And the most effective way of doing that is using plenty of water. Rinse fruits and vegetables thoroughly under running water. You don't need to use soap or detergent. The friction from the running water and rubbing with your hands or a brush can help to remove residues. And also consider a baking soda bath. This is a scientifically proven method to get rid of pesticides. You need to prepare a water and baking soda bath for your fruits and veggies. Use 14 grams of baking soda per liter of water. Soak fresh produce in this solution for 5 to 15 minutes and then rinse it off with cold water. Last, make sure to dry everything with a clean cloth or paper towel to further remove residues. You could also peel your fruit and veggies when possible, but this is not something I recommend. You see, most of the healthy vitamin and minerals you find in produce happen to be in or just below the peel. Remember that a diet rich in fruit and veggies is still the healthiest possible choice, and reducing pesticide exposure is just a way to make it healthier. But we should also consider that washing can reduce but not necessarily eliminate all pesticide residues. There is one more step we could take to reduce our exposure, which is considering buying organic produce for the fruits and vegetables that tend to have higher pesticide residues. They sometimes referred to as the dirty dozen. What foods are in the dirty dozen? The Dirty Dozen is a list published annually by the Environmental Working Group EWG, a nonprofit organization. They identified the foods that have the highest concentrations of pesticide residues. Here they are. In 2023, the foods in the Dirty Dozen are strawberries, spinach, kale, collard and mustard greens, peaches, pears, nectarines, apples, grapes, bell and hot peppers, cherries, blueberries, green beans. Yes, it's a long list and it includes way too many of my favorite foods. But hey, it doesn't absolutely mean that we should stop eating them. But you may want to prefer organic when it comes to these fruit and veggies. 
and in any case to wash them thoroughly. And the EWG is obviously calling for more regulation on the use of pesticides. They motivate this request by saying that many peer-reviewed scientific studies have shown disturbing links between pesticides and human health issues. Now the EWG also provides a list of the cleanest foods they have found. You can see it here. It includes avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas, frozen, asparagus, honeydew melon, kiwi, cabbage, mushrooms, mangoes, sweet potatoes, watermelon, carrots. According to EWS, almost 65% of clean 15 fruit and vegetable samples had no detectable pesticide residues, which is good. So you can go out and buy most of these without worrying too much. Okay guys, with this video today, I hope I have provided you more tools to turn your way of eating into a way of protecting your kidneys. So let me know what you think about the GMO versus organic debate in comment section and feel free to ask questions if you want. And if you want to learn more about how to eat to protect your kidneys, this video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.